Well, the goal of trying to catch all these critters is simply to protect what you've got growing in the garden. And as you can see right here, my two little charentas are still intact. That one right there is starting to crack, so I'm gonna have to go ahead and pick him. Same thing with that one. Those things are ready, looking real good. And this is what we got last night. No, that ain't no coon either. That's a fox. This is the deal with a live trap. It does not discriminate. Whatever kind of animal comes up in there, once they step on that uh, metal plate, the trap closes behind them and they're stuck. So if you got a bunch of pets, this probably ain't a real good idea. I got to figure out somewhere to let them go. Let me go check the other trap and see what we got over there. Now that right there is a face only a mother could love. We got a little bitty possum sitting in there. You just don't never know what you're going to catch in these things. When you out in the countryside, you set a trap like this, uh, be prepared for anything. And that's what you call a two for one special. Set both traps and I uh, caught something in both of them, but I didn't catch the coon. So I'm gonna have to set them again and still keep working on that fella. These guys right here, are not a whole lot of harm to my garden, not much to worry about. What they would do to my chickens though, if I had chickens, that's another story. All right, once you get to your uh, undisclosed location to, uh, to set these things free, what I did, I just run a string into the other end down there, and I'm gonna do the possum first. It'd be the easiest one. Release this little thing at the top, and start pushing in there, and he'll come on out. All right, go on, other way. Look, dummy, go the other way. Go on. Go on. There, scoop. All right, one thing to remember about using uh, these cages and animals in it, uh, you gotta know what that animal's abilities are to put his hands through the wire. If you had a coon in this thing, he could reach his hands right through there, take them little claws, and uh, he could grab hold to you. I'm gonna just ease this up and let this fella go on out of here. He's gonna growl at me a little bit, but as soon as he sees this open end, uh, I'm no longer a threat. All right, go on. Go on. Get. Go on. See? Simple as that. But once you bring your traps back, it's a good idea, or it doesn't hurt anyway, to go ahead and wash these things out, especially if they have uh, relieved themselves in the trap. Try to clean them up, get them ready to use them again. Looking at these two traps real quick, I got an older model on the right-hand side that had the, uh, the wire for the door, and the newer models, they have this solid plate in there, and that's a lot more protective. Uh, just make sure that nothing can reach the hand through there. If you'll notice, the spacing right here in this, uh, if you got a coon in there, he can reach his hands right through there, no problem. If his arm is that long and you come within that distance and he's not in a good mood, he just reach right out and grab you. So you gotta be careful with coons. These things are really easy to work with. The newer models, just push this latch in, push it in like this and pull it up. And you've got this rod that goes down the side that connects this uh, step plate with a little latch up here at the top. And this has a little notch in it. Just lock that thing right in place. Try not to make it too tight. Just like setting the mouse trap, you kind of want to make it, uh, you know, like a hair trigger. But you can test your trap. If you shake your trap just a little bit and it uh, collapses, uh, that's too loose. After you got it set, he just crawl up in there, step on this little plate right here, and the door closes behind him. And he has checked in and he's not checking out until you decide to let him out. Now what you decide to use for bait is totally up to you whether you want to use tuna, chicken, or whatever. Uh, the one thing you have to take into consideration is what kind of pets you have around there because if you put a piece of chicken or some tuna or whatever cat food up in here and you've got cats or dogs, they're walking right in the inn and they're going to be there waiting for you in the morning. So you don't want to catch your pets. One of the things I started doing was using marshmallows, but these have worked real well in these cages right here. 
And what I'll do, this one right here has a little bit smaller holes. Break them in half and go on and push it up through the bottom there a little bit. That way you don't have to reach from up on the inside, trying to reach in from the end and try to get your bait in place. Just push them up through the bottom right there and it also make it a little bit more difficult for him to get the stuff out. Once you got your marshmallows in place, it's just a matter of uh, releasing the end without your finger behind it, pulling this thing up. And then you always got to put a few on the inside to let them know that's the direction they need to go. And then you leave a couple on the outside right here. They come along, walk right up inside there. And when they come on to the other end and start, once they get on this plate right here, step on it, that's it. Good night, Irene. All right, guys, that wasn't exactly what my plan was. I was trying to catch another coon. I know there's another one out here because it's on the back porch. And uh, to get a fox and a possum, uh, that wasn't in my plans. Sometimes that happens. That's the thing about these traps right here. You never know what you're going to catch. But they're really easy to work with, uh, very efficient, do a good job of catching the critters around your place. As far as the release part, let me say this. If you have any doubts whatsoever about whether or not that animal is rabid, might have rabies, do not turn him loose, don't turn your back on him. That fox laid in here nice and quiet. Uh, I felt very comfortable with him, not a problem. The little possum, no worry whatsoever. He just wanted somewhere to go to sleep. You got to use your own judgment and uh, own instincts in dealing with wild animals. For the most part, when you open this trap door right here, they see freedom. They're gone, but if that sucker is uh, in a combative mode, might have rabies, or maybe he wants to turn around and bite the hand that was trying to let him go, uh, you got to watch that stuff. Just be careful with it. You're trying to do a good thing and to catch and release and show him compassion toward the animals by giving him a chance to live elsewhere, uh, but at the same time, you don't want to put yourself in a position where that act of kindness uh, gets you in a whole lot of trouble. So I hope that helps. And uh, y'all take care, and Lord willing, I'll see you next time.